Hello everyone, welcome back. Now this is the part 2 of building AppSync API with serverless framework series. Now if you are watching this part 2, I hope you have already watched our part 1, which uh, we have provisioned all the resources that is required for our AppSync API. If you haven't, please go ahead and watch this video first. I'll put a link in the description and then come back to this part 2 where we are going to design the GraphQL schema. So let's get started. All right, so I have opened my serverless.yml configuration file. And in the last video, we have created the CloudFormation resources. So that is there in the resources.yml file, which is here. And in this resource.yml file, we have created two DynamoDB table for books and orders and the user pool to hold our users and also user pool client. So our application can communicate with this client in order to talk to the user pool. And we also created two user pool groups, one for our admins and one for our customers. And for each user pool, we have created IAM roles such that it will give the required permission for admins and for the customers. But if you really look at these resources that we have configured, you should notice we have not yet configured our AppSync API. Well, we did that purposefully. The reason is we are going to use the AppSync plugin, which is this one, serverless AppSync plugin, to create the AWS AppSync API for us together with the configuration. Now, if you scroll down this page, you should see there's a bunch of configuration we can configure for our AppSync API. So this plugin will make sure it will provision the AppSync API and associate all this configuration with it. Now, one of the main configuration that we need for an AppSync API is the schema. So we need to pass the schema file for this AppSync API configuration. So even before we install this plugin, so let's go ahead and create our schema. So I'll come back to my serverless YAML file. Now here inside the backend folder, I'm going to create a new file. And this file is our schema.graphql file. So this is where we are going to define our GraphQL schema. Now, if you guys have worked with GraphQL before, you should know it all starts with the main schema definition. And we're going to have to define the top level GraphQL fields, which is the query type. And I will create this query type like this. And right below it, let me add that type query. So it's going to refer this particular type. And inside this query type, we are going to define all the queries of our application. Next, we need to define the second main field that is mutations. So again, I'll create a new mutation type. So underneath that, let me add that type as well. And I can also add the subscriptions, but uh, let's not use subscription for this example. I'll save the file now. All right, so now we can start adding the queries and mutations that our application requires. So let's start with queries. Now, one of the queries that we need is to getting the books by its ID. So our customers are able to view the details of a certain book. So let's call this as get book by ID. So this query should return a book type. And I've added the exclamation or a bang sign. That means it must return a book type. So let's go ahead and create that book type right below. Now here in the book type, we need to define the GraphQL fields for a certain book. So let's start by adding the book ID. So every book should have an ID. And I will add the inbuilt ID type in GraphQL. Add a bang sign here as well. That means the book ID is must for a book. And then it should have a title. 
this is of type string and we should have or we must have a title and description so this is again type string then a book has an image so we'll have an image url now here i can add the aws uh, url type and then each book should have an author so that is also a string and that is a must to have field because every book has an author and then there's a price associated with a book and that is of type float then we should record at what time this book was added or created in the bookstore and here the type is aws date time and also when this book got updated So this is again AWS date time. All right. So we have a query get book by ID and it's going to return a book, but we need to pass in the ID. So let's create a parameter inside it. Let's call it book ID is expected for this query and that is of ID type. Congratulations. So you have created your first query. Next, let's go ahead and add other queries. So when someone or when customer is uh, logging into the application they should see the list of books so we should be able to get all the books for a customer so let's add this uh, query and i'll name it as list books however so this list book query should return the list of books now in GraphQL, in order to tell that we are returning a list or an array, we can use these brackets. So what it says is this list book queries is going to return a list of books or an array of books. Now this will of course work, but uh, when we're actually writing our production applications, we need to think about the performance. Now imagine there are thousand books. So if all thousand books got returned at once, then it's going to take a lot of time to load the books and your customers wouldn't like it. So what you would do instead is to load books page by page. So in order to add pagination, so I'm not going to return the list of books like this. Instead, I'm going to return a different type. Let's call it book page or books page. So let's add that type here, books page. And in this books page, it will of course give me a list of books. And it's going to send me a next token of string type. So what happens here is when we are asking for a list of books, we are going to pass in a limit. So I need, let's say this limit is an integer value. The limit could be, let's say 25 books. So we can use DynamoDB SDKs to return only 25 books. So when we are asking for the next 25 books, we need to pass in this next token. Because initially when we are asking for the first 25 books, it is going to return me those 25 books. And apart from that, DynamoDB will also return this next token. And that is the one we will be sending along with the next request when we want to load the next 25 books. So we need to add another parameter that is let's call it next token and that is of string now if you are familiar with dynamodb both scan operation and query operation supports pagination so that you can define a limit and then it's going to return that number of items plus the next token which you need to associate with the next request if you want to return the next set of books really okay so when you are asking for a book we are just getting a books page and I'll make it mandatory. So that's our second query. In the same way, I need to get the orders. Let's say if I'm a customer, I need to get my all past orders. So let's call it my orders. And this time it should return a list of orders. So let's add this right now here, order and and I will go ahead and add this order type. For a particular order, we are associating the user ID so that we are not returning anyone else's orders. And uh, in fact, we'll be 
getting this uh, use ID from his Cognito token because uh, all our users has to log in and when they log in with the Cognito it is returning a Cognito token and inside this Cognito token we can get the user ID so none of our customers can do any funny business asking a list of orders of a different guy really so let's talk about this detail when we are adding our resolvers so user ID is one of that and then it should have the order ID and that is also type of ID and then we should have the book so each order or we can actually call this order item so it is associated with a book so let's add that one as well and then each order item should have a quantity and this is of type int now don't get confused this is an order item so in fact I will rename it item and we are returning a list of order items one order can have multiple order items one order item is always associated with a book and its quantity okay now in order to make this my order query also more scalable let's add pagination because a loyal customer could have so many orders so what I will do instead returning an order item list I'll return an order items page so let's add that here type order items page it should have the fields for order items and this is a list of order item just like we had earlier and then we are going to add the next token which is of string type and when you are requesting it we will add a limit of integer and also the next token very first time when we are requesting both the list books and the my orders the next token will be undefined or empty really when we are loading the second page only we need to pass the next token of from the previous request okay so I think this is enough for our queries so uh, I will make this order item also a required or mandatory okay good now let's go ahead and create our mutations now very first mutation I wanted to add is creating a book so this will be done by an administrator so let's create this mutation create book and that's going to return me a book really and this create book mutation can only be called by an admin so this is where we are going to use the annotations of AppSync API and it has this annotation at AWS auth and then we can say which Cognito group is allowed to do that Cognito groups and then we need to define what groups are allowed to call this mutation in our case we actually have created the admin group earlier let me quickly show you that and here it is Cognito admin group and we call it admin so this is where we are referencing our Cognito groups admin here so only the users within the admin group are able to call upon this mutation and create books anyone from the other group that means the customer group even if they call upon this mutation it will be rejected or unauthorized now we can just create a book with empty input so let's go ahead and add some inputs so I will call this new book and uh, I will create a new input type book input and underneath it let's define our input type so when you are creating a book what attributes do I need so I need to pass along the title and imagine this will be done from an admin UI where there will be a form where the admin will type in the title and also the description that is of string image URL that is of AWS URL author string and also the price of the book again float now I haven't added the created that updated that 
O ID attributes because those things can be added from our backend. Okay, now this looks good. So it's a create order mutation. And for the new book argument, we are passing along the book input. So these things can be captured from a front end form and then pass it along. And then it's going to return me a book. And this is only allowed for the users inside the admin user group. Okay, next let's add another mutation and that is create order mutation. So any customer should be able to create a book order or place a book order. And let's return a boolean. So if it is successfully placed, then you will get a true, otherwise you get a false. Now in order to create the order, again we need to pass in some inputs. So let's call this input uh, new order. And this is of type order input. Now for new books, uh, new order arguments, names can be anything that you prefer really. But let's go ahead and add this order input below this type order input. Now when a customer is making an order, that order may include one or more books. So let's call this items, right? And here I need to pass along an array of book IDs and the corresponding quantities. So let's add another array. So let's call it order item input. So this is an input type, input order item input. And it should have book ID because we are not going to pass along all the book details, but only the reference to the book. So from our backend, we can get the corresponding book details when we are creating the order. And then particularly we need to pass the quantity, how many books that this guy wants really. So here in the order input, it will be a list of order input items. So the customer can buy multiple books and I just noted uh, for our input types also, I added the type as type, but uh, they should also be input type. Now this is a special type in GraphQL, which we are particularly using for mutations when you are passing along the inputs. All right, I think this should be it. Now, although I haven't had all the queries and all the mutation, I believe this is enough for this example. So we have three queries and we have two mutations. Now our next step is to associate this GraphQL schema with the plugin configuration right here. So this is our plugin and underneath it you should see we should have to include the schema here or reference the schema here. And after that we need to create the GraphQL resolvers. And I think it's going to take some time so let's take a break and I'll continue it in the next video. And don't worry guys, I'll be releasing these videos one after the other. So I'll see you in part three.